Hi, this is Dr. Rajeshwar from YR PharmaTube. In this lesson, we shall discuss the historical development of sulfonamides. For the other topics of medicinal chemistry, see the links given in the description right below this video. Sulfonamide drugs were the first broadly effective antibacterials to be used systemically and paved the way for the antibiotic revolution in medicine. The first sulfonamide, trade named Prontosil, was a prodrug. Experiments with Prontosil began in 1932 in the laboratories of Bayer AG. The Bayer team believed that coal tar dyes which are able to bind preferentially to bacteria and parasites might be used to attack harmful organisms in the body. After years of fruitful trial and error work on hundreds of years, a team led by Gerhard Domak found that a red dye synthesized by Bayer chemist that had remarkable effects on treating some bacterial infections in mice. Prontosil, as Bayer named the drug, was the first medicine ever discovered that could effectively treat a range of bacterial infections in vivo, that is, inside the body. It had a strong protective action against infections caused by streptococci, including blood infections, childbed fever, erysipelas, and a lesser effect on infections caused by other cocci. However, it had no effect at all in the test tube that is in vitro exerting its antibacterial action only in live animals. Later, it was discovered by Daniel et al. that the drug Prontosil undergoes metabolic cleavage of the azolinkage to liberate sulfanilamide which was responsible for the observed bacteriostatic properties. Subsequently, sulfonylamide was detected in the blood and isolated from the urine of the patients receiving prontosil. These examinations established that the therapeutic action of prontosil was indeed due to its metabolism to sulfonylamide. Sulfonamide has first been synthesized in 1906 and was widely used in the dye making industry. For several years in the late 1930s, hundreds of manufacturers produced thousands of tons of myriad forms of sulfa. This and non-existent testing requirements led to the elixir sulfonylamide disaster in the fall of 1937, during which at least 100 people were poisoned with diethylene glycol. This led to the passage of the Federal Food, Drug and Cosmetic Act in 1938 in the United States. At the first and only effective broad-spectrum antibiotic available in the years before penicillin, sulfur drugs continued to thrive through the early years of World War II. They were credited with saving the lives of thousands of patients. Sulfur drugs had a central role in preventing wound infections during the war. American soldiers were issued a first aid kit containing sulfur pills and powder and were told to sprinkle it on any open wound. The sulfonylamide compound is more active in the protonated form. The drug has very low solubility and sometimes can crystallize in the kidneys due to its first pKa of around 10. This is a very painful experience so the patients are told to take the medication with copious amounts of water. New Year analogous compounds prevent this complication because they have a lower pKa around 5 to 6 making them more likely to remain in a soluble form. Many thousands of molecules containing the sulfonylamide structure have been created since its discovery by an account over 5400 permutations by 1945 yielding improved formulations with greater effectiveness and less toxicity. Sulfur drugs are still widely used for conditions such as acne and urinary tract infections and are receiving renewed interest for the treatment of infections caused by bacteria resistant to other antibiotics. This is the list of references followed for the lesson. That's all in this video, the historical development of sulfonamides. In the next lesson, we will discuss the chemistry and classification of sulfonamides. Till then, never stop learning and never stop watching my videos. Thank you for watching this video.